Previously, we completed covering the walls in our son's room, and now we have three more small spaces to complete before we are done with shiplap. So we are making progress and getting closer to being done with the shiplap show. Next, we start work on the mechanical room, and this room may be a bit time consuming, but Sarah thinks the transformation will be worth the work. You heard it direct from, from Sarah, she's excited. Follow along as we continue to finish the shiplap in our self-built house. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss a moment of the build. Welcome back to the Shiplap Show. I'm your host, Sarah, and here's your other host, Ryan. <laughs> Where we talk about everything Shiplap. Yesterday, we got the insulation put in to the ceiling of our daughter's closet. Today, we're gonna start the tongue and groove ceiling for that. And then her room is almost done, except for one little portion that needs Shiplap right in her entrance of her room. So we'll probably get that busted out today. So then we'll have our son's room completely done and our daughter's room completely done. We can mark those off. And then we were on to finishing the Shiplap in our mechanical room where our washing machine lives and our ERB and our water heater. And we have the shiplap left in our pantry. So we are making progress and getting closer to being done with the shiplap show. So here we go. Ryan is flying through the ceiling of Lindy's closet. I'm going to finish up this little portion of her wall right here, going up beside her door. And then I have the pieces cut that will go above the door as well. So I'm gonna bust those out and we can mark this room off the list. Are we done in this in the closet? I need one piece ripped down. I will go do that for you. You're gonna rip it? No. When a problem comes along, you must rip it. <laughs> I think I already have to shave these down because the wall shrank. I wonder in other houses how often the walls grow and shrink. If it's a self-built house problem with beginners. I got most of this ceiling all done. There's just one little piece at the back here that I, we need to rip down. So Sarah and I are going to go out and do that now. While I was working on that ceiling in the closet, Sarah was finishing up the shiplap around this door. And we have a couple of little pieces that go along this door jam and they're they're like two inches wide and instead of cutting a bunch of pieces of two inch shiplap most of it's going to get covered up by our finished trim anyway so we're just going to rip down those pieces for inside here and also the same for this closet or the entrance into the bathroom so we're going to rip down two or three pieces get some of these knocked out so that when we go to put in the doors and the finish trim on this bathroom, that we'll thank our past selves.
Okay. Mom's done. Now we can put up the light. <laughs> put up the light. Lindy can come in here and craft her heart out. Be like, move your crafts into this closet. Move them out of the yurt, kid. I think we just do the floors when they move to college. <laughs> floors and trim happen when the kids move out and go to college or go to travel the world or whatever. Traveling the world not paid for by mom and dad. We can work on the pantry or the room with the washer in it. The pantry, we need to order stuff still oh. for. So okay. I think the laundry room is our next step. Okay. All right, yesterday we were in the laundry room here and we got all the insulation put up on this wall and we actually got this wall all the way finished. And it was a little tricky because we had to do a little finish work and cut out for this dryer vent that was back here. But we got that all finished. Now we're gonna see if we can just kind of continue getting this room all filled out. So the first step would be to get this wall behind me done, which I'm not looking forward to because it has so many different penetrations that I'm having to cut around. It's got one, two, three, four, five at least. So we're gonna try to knock that out and then the other wall on the other side shouldn't be too big of a problem, but we may not have enough insulation. So we're gonna get done what we can and take- But I came to interrupt. I think it's gonna be such a huge transformation though. Like even though there's so many different holes you have to go around. Yeah. These walls are always like the most gratifying. So okay. this is going to be good. Okay. All right. You, <laughs> oh, exit. You, you heard it direct from, from Sarah. She's excited. <laughs> your first obstacle huh yeah so i'm getting to our first uh, obstruction in the wall here and i have my three inch hole saw and these work great but unfortunately i have a little bit of a problem i think it'll still work but i saw something on youtube where they were like oh do you need to drill a hole bigger than the hole that you already drilled then just use the smaller hole as the pilot and put the bigger one on the outside and the smaller one on the inside. And that technique worked great. But now I cannot get these two hole saws apart. So if any of you have any tips or tricks on how to get these two removed, I'd much appreciate it because now anytime I want to cut a three inch hole, I also have to cut an interior two and a half inch hole. And that's not very fun. So I'm going to get to cutting, see if we can get past this obstacle and get to the next one. Oh, but then you can make cool things like this. Ooh, it could be a Christmas tree ornament. It's like a my bolo. <laughs> Shout out to Kyle. That was a whole lot. Oh. Ooh, that looks. That 
That looks nice. Professional grade. I'm wondering if this gas back. <laughs> It's a laundry room. That's a lot of cutouts. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We're done with that wall that we started in the equipment room that had all of the different outlets in it. It looks awesome. It will be so nice to be doing laundry and look behind me and see a wall that's finished now or look in front of me, but behind the washer. But we're gonna change gears now. We actually had the door to our chicken coop fail. So we need to go get that replaced. We're gonna start the project today by just cutting out the piece of plywood that's going to be the new door and then get it painted. And then tomorrow we should be able to put it up. Hi girls. No, we're not going free ranging. You already did that this morning. Hermie. When we put together our chicken coop, we did it all out of materials that we already had on our land, either from the cabin kit home or from the deck that we originally had here that was attached to the original fifth wheel that was on the property a long time ago. So when we put on this door over here, we used a piece of our subfloor, which is a 5 8 piece of OSB. OSB. <laughs> it's like I'm going to say the wrong thing. It's super heavy. And when it gets wet, even though we've painted it, like it takes on the weight of the water. So it ended up just ripping out of the hinges that we had because when you lift it, it lifts up and then you can prop it up. You can get into the chickens and get the eggs and all that stuff. So we're replacing it with a smaller piece of plywood that we hope when we paint it won't take on the water and will be much lighter. So that'll be like 75. 36. Hey, no, no, no. So much for keeping it sawdust free in here. All right. All right, we have the piece all cut to the right size. We sanded it so it's nice and smooth. And we're actually gonna paint it first with the primer that Ryan put a coat of on the floor in the back when his brother and Erica came to visit. So we're gonna get that painted on there and then let it dry. And then we will put whatever color we're gonna do. So I have the color that's the same color as the shed and then I have a little bit of the white that it used to be. My whole thought is I will paint this thing this off-white color and then one day I'll paint this beautiful painting on top of it, but there just doesn't seem to be time right now to do any of that. So it might just be a green door for a little while because that's the paint that we have. Right, we are back in the build site. We got in this weekend and got some more shiplap pulled off of our piles so they've all had time to dry so we can continue this shiplapping party. So we're gonna continue the work in our mechanical room and first we're gonna start out with filling in the back wall of the 
entrance to the mechanical room because right above the doorway is where the light goes. And we would love for the light to be in there and we could actually start seeing what we're doing without setting up an external light to shine in on us. So that's what we're gonna do first. And then we are going to put in all the insulation in that room so then we can just get it all covered. So here we go. Now, now I think we need to do the one for up here around this light. Mm -hmm. And then we can put in the light. Yeah, <laughs> make a big difference. Because yesterday you told our kids you were helping mom build a house. <laughs> yeah, you said. <laughs> like all day long I help your dad build a house. And you were like, no, no, no. All day long I help your mom build a house. Here comes another boob light. Since you've already done this not too long ago, it should go pretty fast. <laughs> you, one would think. Like we could start timing you. Let's see if I, see if I improve. It was like when you were doing the speakers, you know? Yeah. And I was like, oh, this last one's gonna be so fast. And it and was the one forever. that got so stuck. Yeah. So it could be a honeycomb light. It's kind of like one of the... But also a boob light. One of the things like that they put on and it's like, like ancient Greece or something. Yeah, you're very... It's like made out of gold. Yeah, you're very Madonna-esque right need, now. <laughs> Light! Oh my gosh! Another lit space? Well, it's just time to do the ceiling and then we can put the washing machine back in place. We got that wall done in our laundry room slash mechanical room and we got the light up, which is awesome it's we put up our old water heater without a light in there and just like holding flashlights or having a work light on us so major upgrade and now ryan is starting the tongue and groove ceiling that will go above the portion where our washer and dryer sit so then we can slide our washer back into place and get it going again because it's an item we need frequently and if you're wondering what we're gonna do with the ducting that you can see for our erv system our plan right now is to leave it exposed and possibly in the future we'll put a soffit over it, but from what we know, we'll still pass inspection and get our certificate of occupancy with that exposed. Not in the 
We have the ceiling portion done that goes right above the washer and dryer. And now Ryan is gonna start working on a wall that I've already cut some pieces for. While he's working on that, I'm gonna do a little cleanup in this area because I was running out of space to even stand at my wood cutting area. So I need to organize my wood scraps and maybe put some tools away that I know we're not using in the very, very near future. Over the last couple of days, we've had nothing but just rain, just constant rain here. And today we finally have some blue skies and some of the water is evaporating off and there's nothing more than Sarah and I would rather do than just enjoy a little bit of sunshine. But instead, we're back in the laundry room here and we really have to finish up this wall and this interior wall so that we can get the washer back in place and have a functioning washing machine for the household. So that's what we're gonna focus on here before lunch. And then our last little open loop is that we have our chicken coop door that Sarah talked about, the hinges broke on it. We got a new piece, we got it all st stained and painted. Now we just have to get it attached. So we're gonna work on those things, see if we can get it all knocked out today. All right, I just got done doing the electrical in here. On the other side of this wall is our kitchen and we still need to have our hood fan, which needs to have an electrical outlet. So I ran a uh, wire off of this outlet and left some wire here coiled up so that we can drill a hole in that side once we know where the final placement of the hood fan is. And then we'll be able to uh, connect this to the outlet and and we'll be able to have our hood van. So a little bit of electrical work this morning. Now I'm gonna finish up this wall with the shiplap and be very close to finishing this laundry room. Shiplapping a house would be so easy if you didn't have any outlets or any lights. It'd or be any... so easy? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be <laughs> easy, but it'd go much more quickly. Yeah. Final board for this portion. Perfect fit. While Ryan's been busy putting up the shiplap, I've been cutting a lot of shiplap for him to keep him busy. <laughs> We're actually done with another wall in the mechanical room and now Ryan's moving on to the last bigger wall and then all of a sudden we both looked to the back of the mechanical room and realized there was still some green foam insulation exposed. So that wall <laughs> needs some shiplap as well. But I think these next two walls should go pretty quick because there's actually not too much that needs to be cut out around. That has been what's taken us so long in this room. Every single wall seems to have like five outlets, <laughs> but these last two, that's not the case. So fingers crossed, we get through these last two walls really quick and then we can get that washing machine moved back into place and call this room almost done because we still have a part of the ceiling that needs to get covered. So I'm back in our teeny tiny equipment room and we just got this wall put up. And I don't know if it's an illusion or not, but that extra three quarters of an inch on the wall makes the space seem even smaller. So it's kind of like, 
there's not a whole lot of room to navigate in here, but luckily we won't have to come back here very often. Fingers crossed. So I think the last thing we have to do is get this small portion of ceiling completed and then this back wall. Sarah says she has all the pieces cut for me. So I guess that's what I'm doing. What are you doing, Sarah? I, I have been working on putting this switch plate cover on for a little while. Tell me, tell me all about what you've learned about switch plate covers. Well, sometimes the, the electrician that put them in, put them <laughs> in too far back for the uh, ship lap, didn't leave enough room. Yeah, the box is a little cattywampus. So there. yeah, so then you gotta put these little spacers in. And then sometimes when you put on the switch plate, you got to move these back and forth too. So there's a lot more moving parts than one would think. What's your ETA get. on completion? I would say, gosh, it's 2.21, uh, 3.30. There's another hour? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll check back with you. Now, now you're getting it. I had to really think about it. We are as done as we are going to go today in the electrical room. We still have the ceiling to finish up and we still have a few more boards we need to put in a few places. There are some spots where we can't put the shiplap yet because we need to get the electrical ran for the fan in the kitchen. And, and I think that's it. I think that's the only spot where we're holding off. But we have enough done to get the washer moved back into place. Ryan's already cleaning up the top of the washer and we're gonna get that done. And then, you know, I can get back to my favorite hobby of doing laundry. Building the house with my boo. What a wonderful way to say I love you. 